Hello everyone, Fast Eddie here. So this video is gonna be about how to do a U-turn or a slow speed turn on a motorcycle. So there's been a bunch of other videos I made about how to drag your knee in one hour. I'm in the same exact parking lot I was for that video. Uh, so this is specifically what I'm doing and what I'm thinking about when I'm making very low speed turns. So if you have to make a U-turn on the street or if you're in a gas station and it's really crowded and you only have a little bit of room to make a U-turn, so how do you do that without going back and forth and making a 50 point turn. You know, you want the cool points, just make a quick U-turn and go. So a lot of people disregard slower speed techniques because it's like, ah, it's no big deal. It's all about going fast and going to the track. But if you find a rider that's really good at slower speed skills, like really tight technical turns and full lock turns and everything else, they're probably really good at faster speed because the fundamentals are there and they have a really good understanding of the bike. So hopefully this video will give you a better understanding of what to go practice and what I'm doing when I'm practicing low speed. So first, just general, when you're going fast, the bike's moving quickly, right? So if you're going left through a corner, you're going fast. So gravity, if you're the bike's leaned over, you're going left, gravity makes the bike want to fall over. It's just leaned, it just wants to fall. But since you're going fast, you have this technical term called centrifugal force throwing the bike to the outside. So it's the balance of those two things why the bike doesn't fall. But if you go five miles per hour and lean the bike over, it's probably gonna fall over. So for low speed maneuvers, one of the key big things to do for lower speed is you're not going fast enough to keep the bike upright. Uh, just the weight of the bike is gonna overcome. It's the gravity just pulls the bike over. So when you're going really slow, you wanna use your weight, your body, to get to the opposite side of the bike to balance it so it doesn't fall. So if I have a big old bike leaning left, I wanna get all of my weight over to the opposite side of the bike so my weight will compensate for the bike falling that way. That's counterbalancing. I'm balancing the bike, preventing it from falling over by getting my weight to the opposite side, counterbalancing. So it's kind of like my other video I made. If you're going fast and you're going left, you want to get your head and your midline, your whole center of your body to the inside of the bike if you're going faster speed left. But now if you're going slower speed left, just flip it. Now you're going to push the bike down to do a really tight turn and now you're going to get all your weight, your body, your center line, your head over to the opposite side of the bike Still going left, but now you're just going slower. So to give you a little bit better idea of what I'm talking about, so check this out. So I'm on the bike, and if I want to go left, so the handlebar is going to be turned to the left, the bike's leaning to the left. Now if I lean to the left right now to the inside, like I'm going fast, me and the bike are going to tip over. So I'm going five miles per hour, and I don't have the centrifugal force and blah, blah, blah to keep the bike up right. So when you're going slow, you want to get your weight and this is when you're stomping down. All of your weight is on the opposite foot peg. You can even see the bike. See how the bike's already moving? Just my weight is coming over here. All my weight's to the opposite side of the bike. So if I'm going faster speed, I'm to the inside like this. My head is by my mirror. My center line is all the way over to the inside. And this is how I do faster speed. So for lower speed, do the exact opposite. Now get your weight to the opposite mirror. Your head over here, your center line over here. Your butt a half cheek off the other direction and now your weight's on that side. Now I'm balancing the bike with my weight. The bike's falling that way, and all my weight is over here. That's the, one of the main things you wanna do to practice lower speed techniques. First thing. Now I'm not gonna say too much about uh, rear brake. So if I'm doing really technical stuff or I'm just practicing full lock turns or seeing how long I could balance, I drag the rear brake, I kinda just push down on it to slow the bike down. However, if you wanna do that after you already have the fundamentals down, go for it. I do that too. But to get a really good understanding, there's only two controls you need to worry about. The clutch and the throttle. Just practice that for a while. Don't even worry about the brakes. Keep your toes on the foot pegs, no brakes. So the main technique is counterbalancing. Get all your weight to the opposite side when you're doing low speed stuff. And then the controls you wanna worry about is just the clutch and the throttle. So if you ever feel like, say you're practicing a left hand U-turn, a lot of people do this. They get the feeling like, oh, the bike's gonna fall and they have to put their foot down, like, oh, they're gonna lift the bike back up. So if you're going really slow to the left and you pull in the clutch, you just cut off all the power to the rear wheel. Now you just have a 500 pound piece of metal that's gonna fall over. So you have to have a little bit of power going to the bike to keep the thing upright. So if you're going to the left, if you pull the clutch in and cut power, the bike's gonna fall. So you have to have it in the zone a little bit, the friction zone, you're riding the clutch, you're slipping the clutch to keep power a little bit to the wheel. Now one interesting thing with the throttle, so you have to have a little bit of power so I recommend just raising the RPM up a little bit. You'd be like, ee, so you always have power. And then you're just kind of going in and out of power with the clutch. The throttle doesn't do anything. It's one of the variables you have to use 
but you can kind of forget about it if you just hold it steady. You keep the power up a little bit, so you always have power there, but you're really regularly regulating your speed and if the bike's gonna tip or not with the clutch. So you're just slowly, I mean, I'm talking about a half inch, like millimeters at a time, you're just in that part where you either go or you're not going. And you really have to play with that. It's a very, very fine, slow skill with your clutch. You're not pulling all the way in and releasing it all the way out. The bike's just gonna go crazy. Very slow movements. So hold the, thr the throttle steady, slip the clutch, ride the clutch, and you just gotta play with it. You have to get over the fear of what if I drop my bike? That's why I recommend it if you buy anything for the bike, get crash bars. Practicing lower speed stuff, I have dropped this bike in a parking lot going five miles per hour at least seven or eight times. It hits this, it hits that, it hits my rear peg, it hits this thing, whatever, it doesn't touch the bike. And if the bike tips over, I don't care, I learn something, I pick it right back up and I keep practicing. One of the biggest things I've learned about lower speed techniques are from the lessons I learned after I've dropped it. I realized, wow, if I really do that, it is gonna fall, I have to do something different. So you gotta, be afraid, you gotta not be afraid to drop the bike. If you have no engine guards or engine cases or crash bars, I would definitely be afraid, go get those things before practicing. But uh, get some protection on your bike. So just like the other video I made about faster speeds, it's the same thing for lower speeds. Whenever you're going through any turn, the three things I recommend doing in this order is get your body set up, and then you turn your head, and then you turn the bike. So body, head, bike. So if I'm going through a left-hand slow turn, I get my body position set up to the opposite side. I turn my head and look where I want to go. And this is where you really need to point your chin where you want to go. Imagine you have an arrow glued to your chin. If I'm going left, my eyes are pointed that way. That's not my chin. So point your whole chin where you want to go. And for lower speed, you want to try to look at your license plate. If you're making a really tight left U-turn, you go where you look. So if you're looking right there, you're probably going to go directly to the ground. So body, head, look where you want to end up, like way over there, turn your head and then you turn the bike. This is the opposite of faster speed again. So faster speed turns, you want the bike to be upright as possible so the suspension could do its job, less lean, less risk, etc. But for lower speed turns like this, you gotta lean the bike very, very far in order to make a tight turn. If you keep the bike upright and try to make a left turn just by leaning it that much, it's gonna be a 50 foot huge left turn. But if you lean the bike this far, that's gonna make a very, very tight turn. So you gotta push the bike down, kinda like your handlebars on a shovel, Shovel that bike down, push it down. You don't want it to fall over, get all your weight to the opposite side. So get your body, head, and then you turn the bike. Slipping the clutch, throttle, no brake, and just getting your bike to the opposite side. So I'm gonna jump on. I'll do a couple U-turns right here in the big parking lot, and pay attention to what I'm doing with the lines. Uh, this is in my Moto Jitsu Club. There's level four, three, two, one. But there's a parking spot, just try to go down the middle of one, skip one, go down the middle of the other one, and you can just kind of go back and forth like that. I'll do that for a couple times. I'll be talking, explaining, and then I'll try to do within four parking spots. Try to do a figure eight between that. And this is something you can literally practice for hours. How consistent can you be? How relaxed can you be? How tight the circle you can get, etc. So check it out. Again, anytime you're doing anything on a motorcycle, if you're not fully geared up, that's a hell of a risk. I would not recommend jumping on a bike without all of your gear. All right, so pay attention to what I'm doing. Body, head, bike. Body, head, bike. Slip in the clutch. A little bit of throttle, no brakes.
So if you heard my throttle a little bit, so I have a little bit of power to keep the bike going. Very slow, slow slip in the clutch. So I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna do a demonstration. I'm gonna rev the throttle because to show you that the throttle is irrelevant. You can have it full throttle if you want to, but the main thing is slipping the clutch very slowly with the clutch to have just a little bit of power. Check it out. So again, the throttle is just a variable. You have to have a little bit of power, but it's all in the clutch. The reason why I wasn't taking off or wheeling or going crazy, because I'm just limiting the power with the clutch. That is the key thing. And if you notice, all of my weight is to the opposite side of the bike. This bike weighs 500 pounds, but it's not tipping over going two miles per hour because all of my weight, I am literally standing on the outside peg. If my weight is over here and the bike is falling that way, no problem, the bike won't fall. But again, practicing what I just did, especially with no brakes, I have dropped this bike five or six times. But once you get over the fear of dropping your bike and it happens, lesson learned, pick it back up and just keep on practicing. So I'm gonna do one more demonstration of the same types of thing, but now I'm gonna drag the rear brake a little bit just to show you what you can do when you keep on practicing. If you start to add the brakes, you could go way slower and start to try to balance the bike and just get more comfortable with it. Check it out. With just a little bit of rear brake, I'm able to slow the bike down, get to full lock, and just try to practice balancing. Again, if you look at my foot on the brake, I'm not doing this. I'm not moving my foot back and forth. My foot stays like this. I'm just slowly pushing down a little bit of pressure and slowly releasing it. So think about like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 40, 35, 40, 45, 50. That's what I'm doing with the rear brake. Just to slow the bike down a little bit. Because I'm controlling the speed with the clutch, but if I get a little bit of momentum going, only way to slow it down is to completely pull in the clutch. Then I'm coasting. That way the bike could fall over. So I keep the RPMs up. I just slow the bike down a little bit with the rear brake. But I highly suggest practicing what I just did. No brakes. Get used to the throttle. Play with the clutch. Counterbalance. Point your chin. Look where you want to go. Practice, practice, practice. And if you do those things, I guarantee if you just practice 10 minutes a day, within a couple weeks of practicing anything 10 minutes a day, you're going to be pretty good at it. There's always time to practice. You could do it right before you go home, right before you get gas at the gas station. You could practice a couple U-turns. Just practice, 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 practice. I hope this made sense. If you have any comments, feel free to type them up. I'll reply back to you. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.